pretty much just as creepy as the last one. Um, and this is the story that I talked about in my last video about how they kind of, you know, they kind of slipped away from the little boy's uh, disappearance and started working on Madeline's disappearance. And that's who I'm going to be talking about today, Madeline McCann. Okay, uh, now to start with, uh, now Madeline McCann, are, uh, are the police any closer to knowing the truth? That is the big, big question because of how she disappeared. Here's the question, Here, well here's the, uh, the big upset about that question. Nobody knows how she disappeared, she just disappeared. You know, and it's, and it's weird how that's the only kind of information they got on something like that. You know, she just disappeared, you know. You know, and she was at an apartment uh, in Portugal. But to start off with first, um, now in the 10 years since Madeline McCann went missing from a holiday apartment uh, in Portugal, uh, Myriad, uh, theories about what happened to her have taken root. Now, uh, only one fact remains uncontested, that she was reported missing at 10.14 p.m. on the evening of Thursday May 3rd of 2007. Now, it was at that point when police were called that the clock started ticking on the biggest missing persons investigation for decades, a search with, uh, which remains very much active to this day. Uh, now, facts, the facts are basically everything they could probably think of, you know, which is what happens with all these cases when people disappear. Now, the hard currency of any police investigation have proved almost uniquely elusive. Every sighting, every, uh, every timing, and every witness statement has been disputed in the years that have elapsed since. <laughs> Boy, that's a real crazy one. And, of course, with this kind of case, the parents are always the first ones that everybody looks at, you know, whether it be the people in the town or the police department. And with Kate and Gary McCann, um, they quickly became they they quick they quickly came under suspicion by Portuguese police. A development that the couple are certain meant vital clues were missing what were missed in the first hours of the days after Madeline's disappearance. Um Let's see. Okay. Well, first of all, every possible theory has been explored since then. That Madeline was abducted by a pedophile, that she was killed during a bungled burglary, and her body was dumped, which is what they normally do if something like that was to happen. Um, that she was abducted by traffickers and sold to a childless couple. Now, uh, now that she... That, it was either that or that she wandered out uh, out of the apartment and died in a tragic accident and many more besides that <clears throat> now the date however uh not one shred of proof of what happened to madeline uh, has been unearthed the question of what happened to madeline would become not only a personal tragedy for the mccann family but a national obsession in the UK and in, and in Portugal. Now, Madeline of Rothley, uh, I think that's uh, Le or Leicestershire, Leicestershire, was on the pen, uh, oh, here we go with that word again, penultimate, yeah, on the penultimate day of her family holiday on the day she vanished. She had spent part of her day playing by the swimming pool in the Ocean Club Resort, where the last known uh, let me see where the last known pictures of her was taken at 2:29 p.m. Okay, she's a real cute little girl too. Uh, let's see here. Um, reports of when she was last seen alive by independent witness varies. Uh, but she was still alive at around 6 p.m. when she and her parents went into their apartment at 5A Rua, Rua Drive, Augustin Hole da Silva, um, where Madeline and her two-year-old two twin brother and sister were 
<clears throat> were ready for bed. The McCanns told police they, they put the children uh, to bed at around 7 p.m. and that all three were asleep by 8.30 p.m. When when they went uh for when they went for dinner at a tapas bar fifty yards across the pool from their apartment, there they met seven seven friends with whom they were on holiday. Okay. Here's my question. You put the kids to bed. It doesn't say that they were still being watched by someone, you know, while they were at dinner. So basically they left them there by themselves. That's what it seems like to me. So I would imagine that would be the reason why every, everybody is blaming them for the, the, the little girl's disappearance. I mean, they put them to bed and went to dinner thinking if they're asleep, nothing will happen to them. <sighs> Anything can happen this, in this day and age, but, you know, some people make mistakes, you know. But uh, the McCanns say uh, checks were made. On, on their children uh, every half hour, sometimes by other members of the party, Comp um, comprising Dr. Russell O'Brien and Jane Tanner from Exeter, uh, Dr. Matthew and Rachel o Oldsfield from London, and David and Fiona Payne from Le Leicester, uh, together with Mrs. Payne's mother, Diane Webster. Mrs. Webster... Uh, uh, however, reportedly told police that each couple was responsible for checking their own children. Okay. Now, Gary McCann went to the apartment at 9.05 p.m. When all, the, when all the children were sleeping soundly and Madeline was still in her bed. And this is what he says. So, now, uh, the police of Portugal, however, have never accepted the McCann's uh, evidence as undisputed. They initially regarded the McCann's as suspects and believed uh, the McCann's the McCann's could have killed Madeline uh, any time after the last independent sighting of her at 6 p.m. Wow, that is absolutely nuts. You know, in a situation like that, because the parents don't want to be blamed for something like that, especially if they know they didn't do anything, and especially if the child just disappears. Now, the same thing happened with a young boy years ago. Uh, the parents and it was the, the two parents, little boy, two years old, and his sister, his older sister, and a cat was all sleeping in a trailer, you know, that was near a campsite where they were at. The parents was outside enjoying the view. All of a sudden, they hear a scream, which sounded like their little boy. And then when they ran back to the trailer, they saw that the door was open in the back. And when they ran inside, the little boy was gone, but the daughter and the cat were still there. But they were asleep, sound asleep. Now, the question is, how in the world could you hear a scream and not wake up? Okay? So, you hear the scream just so that you can be... that They made it, whoever did it, made it aware to the parents but not to the kids okay somehow they were able to cancel out the sound in the trailer on that end but somehow was able to hear this somehow the parents was able to hear it regardless so it was just it's just weird you know that the little boy has never been found so so in a case like that this is just like that um now the timeline uh, that evening shows that uh, Dr. Matthew uh, Oldsfield went into ap apartment A at 9.30 p.m. And noticed that Madeline's room seemed lighter than the other, as if uh, the shutters as if the shutters had been uh, partially opened. Um, I guess they mean the atmosphere with the air flowing through and all that stuff. Um, he could not be certain whether Madeline was there. Kate McCann was next to check on the children at 10 p.m. She ran back to the restaurant moments later saying Madeline was missing. Um, the McCanns and their friends made a quick search of the, of the resort, but after finding no sign of Madeline, the police were called at 10.14 p.m. So that's when she was reported missing, but she obviously missed, uh, went missing somewhere between 9.30 and 10 p.m. It was just the fact that she was reported missing at 10.14. So she didn't actually go missing around that time. Okay, uh, the McCanns told police that 
uh, told police they had put Madeline to bed with her with her pink comfort uh, blanket and favorite soft toy, Cuddle Cat. That was the name of it, of course. Uh, and was wearing short sleeved marks and and, and and Spencer. Let me see. I think it's Spencer Ior pajamas. Hmm, don't know what that means. Anyway. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, they got a picture of the room here, so let me get a picture of that real quick. Because I want to post that on my channel with the with the thumbnail. That way you can got you guys can see what's going on with all this. I'm gonna get some of those pictures too. All right, here we go. This is the picture of the room that they all slept in. Okay, now, crucially, however, the apartment was not initially treated as a crime scene. Meaning, around twenty people went in out of the went in out before it was sealed off, uh, contaminating potential evidence. Uh, roadblocks were not put in place until ten a.m. Uh, the next day. Border guards were not informed for hours, and Interpol did not put out a global missing persons alert for five days. I think that's pretty strange as well. Um, now, it meant, well, I would imagine if they didn't do it like that, it's because they were looking at the parents, you know, uh, at first, you know, as the main suspect, which is, would be the reason why they wouldn't have done that, because... If someone had kidnapped her, of course they're gonna put a block out. Uh, you know, uh, you know they're gonna block a bunch of areas off. You know, but still they're looking at the parents, so there wouldn't be no need to actually do that, which is understandable, until they can get definitive proof of uh, what, what, or not say what or who actually took her. Can I say they're doing a composite sketch of who they think might have taken her? Okay, hold on here. All right. Um, Okay, it uh, it meant that the most crucial time of any missing person uh, any any missing persons investigation, the first twenty four hours was largely quandered. Uh, the police have been trying to catch up uh, ever since. Yet potentially key sightings and artists impression and artist impressions of suspects were kept from the public for for years. Okay, that's that's also very strange. I guess they want to make sure they got all their proof together and everything has to be definitive and their computations have to be correct at all times. So I understand that, you know, you don't want to put nothing out that is not true, especially if the suspects that they think are, are responsible aren't really responsible. You know, they don't, want, they don't want to, you know, blame somebody for something they didn't do, you know, so I can understand that. Now, Marion Martin Smith uh, from Ireland told police they uh, saw a man carrying a child matching Madeline's description at around 10 p.m. on Rua de Escola Primaria, uh, 500 yards from the McCann's apartment. He was heading towards the beach, did not look did not look like a tourist, and did not seem comfortable carrying the child. This is what they told the police, of course. Um, the evidence was compelling, but it was only in October 2013 that two e-fit images of the man compiled compiled by police from descriptions given by Mr. and Mrs. Smith were released by Scotland Yard to uh, coincide with a BBC Crime Watch uh, um, re uh, reconstruction of Madeline's disappearance. He uh, remains a suspect. Okay, I'm gonna get a picture of that too. That way y'all can see exactly who they were talking about. Okay, got that. Now Okay, see now this thing, this thing just goes on and on and on. Okay. Um They did a lot of cons uh, composite sketches of uh the person that may be um involved in this. Uh but uh, I'm gonna move up a little bit here. Now uh, let's see. In July of 2008, the Portuguese Attorney General um, announced that the McCanns were no longer suspects and the, uh, and the investigation was closed. The McCanns hired private investigators to carry, out, uh, to carry on the search, but it was not until May of 2011 that Theresa May, 
the home security announced that Scotland Yard would review the evidence in the case, which had on, which had until then been the responsibility of uh, Leicester um, Shire Police, uh, working with the Portuguese authorities in July 2013. Um, Operation Gr um, Grange, uh, the, review, the review of the available evidence became a full-blown criminal in inquiry. And Scotland Yard said it was concentrating on a criminal act by a stranger. Okay, so basically, uh, let's see, basically... They still haven't found her, and all this information that they are gathering up is just basically hearsay because they still haven't found the person that actually did it. So whoever they got uh, as a suspect is still either at large or still looked at as one of the main suspects. That guy could probably be dead by then. Who knows? Because uh, like I said, she disappeared years ago. This happened in, um, let's see, go back a little bit. Oh yeah, this happened in 2007. So, you know, it's been a while since then. Okay, but yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I got on that story. Um, it's still an ongoing case, and they are still looking at suspects that they um, gathered from some of the, uh, you know, some of the um, information that was told to them about people who may have saw them. So, um, get a picture of that. It's a really cute little girl too. Um, I don't think it mentioned her age though. It might have, but um, it never did mention her age. She looked like she could have been at least maybe four, four years old. But um, like I said, it it wasn't um, proven though how old she was. I guess they just left that out. But anyway, um, yeah, that's all the time I got on this one, guys. I got more coming as usual. Um, so the main thing is to keep your mind, um, keep your mind open and think three-dimensionally and we can come up with any kind of answer that needs to come up about these kind of cases you know because i'm going to cancel out the word theory in everything that i say because when you got weird evidence that surround cases like this you have to have weird answers to solve these weird uh cases okay so let's not say theory anymore let's say it's a fact and that's what i'm going to say i'm just going to say it's, it's a well-known fact because that's what the evidence brings to the table it brings you idealistic thoughts that can really coincide with the strange evidence the weird evidence and sometimes these weird uh, sometimes the evidence and the answers alone are weird so with that being said all my answers all the stuff that I come up with the, the theories they're gonna just be facts because if we keep saying theory we're never gonna figure it out and the problem is everybody else out there who would say it's just a theory and there's no proof to um there's no definitive proof to say that it is fact and not just a theory you know but it is what it is this is a world filled with nothing but theories and fairy tales and folklore and all kinds of other stuff that people try to say is not real but it really is just like when people try to say that's a man walking around in a gorilla suit but it's really big you know who's to say that I'm not saying that it's not possible, but the, ep the, the the videos footage that people have look too real for you to say, oh, that's a man in a gorilla suit, you know, because gorilla suits look a certain way and so do Bigfoot, so that's, you know, it's just an educated guess on that part, but anyway, guys, I have to go, it's almost time for me to walk out the door, I got probably another 20 minutes before I have to walk out the door, I have to be to work by 6.30, but you know, I want to be able to get out of here on time so I'm gonna have to be late for work so without further ado I just want to thank you guys for watching my channel once again I love you guys and I appreciate all of your support I appreciate all the comments that you guys are adding to the videos and the questions that I've been asked and I try to answer them with the best of my abilities so if you got any more questions you know where to find me right here on insane disappearances hit me up on the email that's will be in my description uh, box below and also any other information that you may need I will put that in the description box below also um, 
there was a video that was put out on the internet today about uh, finding the finding of a mummified uh, alien corpse that was like kind of in a fetal position or like you know just kind of sitting there with his le his uh, legs to his chest and his hands were like this. The only thing was it had three uh, it had like three fingers, okay, three fingers and three toes, very elongated fingers and toes and, you, and it, it, there was a picture of it uh, it was like um, you can see the head you can see the, the indentation of the eyes you know it was pretty the sockets were pretty big and the eyelid one eyelid looked like it was closed the other eyelid you couldn't really see but it was weird you know it, and they said it was found in uh, in or around the Nazca lines you know which is a pretty uh, sacred place you know where they actually use that area it, well, it said that they use that area as a landing strip for aliens so who knows? But I um I'll post that picture. Uh, well, there's really no need to post it, really. But you know, I'm just adding some news, some strange and mysterious news to the to the matter here. But anyway, guys, I gotta go. So you know how I do it at the, at the end of every video. Aloha, mahalo, and a hui ho. Peace out, guys. Have a great day.